those of us who experience anxiety or have experienced bouts of anxiety will know exactly what the morning dread feeling is. So it's morning anxiety. Quite often I would call it, and I've heard other people call it, the morning dread. It's this pervasive feeling when you first stir awake, a feeling of dread, a feeling of anxiousness sets in, and you have no idea why. You don't know what is causing it. And quite often throughout the morning it will start to dissipate. But every morning when you wake, it's there. I am going to share with you how to set yourself free forever from the morning dreads, from the morning anxiety. I used to have it. I've had many clients who have experienced the very same thing. They put different words to it, but it's the same kind of experience. And who have also set themselves free from this experience of morning dread by following really specific steps. And, you know, morning dread or morning anxiety can be generalized, meaning it's really challenging to pinpoint what the specific root of it is, or it can be very situation specific. And so it's happening during a particular period of your life due to circumstantial influences. It doesn't matter which one it is, whether it's generalized or situational. The things that we're going to go through are going to help you to set yourself free from it either way. You're listening to Practical Spirituality with B, the podcast with spiritual advice for your everyday life, helping you align with your soul so you can live with purpose, fulfillment and magic. I'm Bernadette Logue, you can call me B, and I'm excited to share this episode with you. Okay, beautiful friend, we're going to talk about setting yourself free, free from morning anxiety, also known as the morning dreads. So, we're going to cover quite a few things. I'm going to give you a bit of an overview of how we're going to um, run through this and how we're going to unravel it. First of all, I'm going to talk to you about some fundamental keys to dealing with anxiety so that you make sure you've got a foundation set. Because if you don't have the foundation set to support you to be free from anxiety, then everything you do will be like trying to press the accelerator in your car while you've got a handbrake on. Or trying to soothe and calm yourself while you are simultaneously pouring fuel, petrol, gas on the fire of anxiety okay and if we don't understand these basic things about how we function as a human being we can be doing all the good work to try to help ourselves with morning anxiety or anxiety in general and we're not getting the benefits we could be getting and the peace that we could be experiencing because we haven't done some basic adjustments in our life and lifestyle that would make it much more effective for us. So before we go into what some of those things are, we want to understand that we can come at anxiety from multiple angles. I like to address it, and I had anxiety from as early as I can remember, about three years old, and I had it wildly at play all the way through my teens, my 20s, my 30s, affecting my health, my behavior in all sorts of ways. And it wasn't really until until well into my 30s, mid to late 30s, and now in my 40s that that's really gone and it's been like addressed and is being dealt with in a holistic way so that I can be free of that. And if there are circumstantial things that flare up in life which would prompt or provoke an anxious response from me, I've got the tools, which I'm going to be sharing with you too, about how to address that really quickly and really holistically, so you nip it in the butt really early. Okay, so, anxiety is not mental, it's not emotional, it's not physical, it's not spiritual, it's all of the things combined. Anxiety is all of those things. 
when we have anxiety, be it morning dreads, morning anxiety, or any kind of anxiety, generalized or situation specific, stuff is going on within our physiological system, our physical body, our nervous system, our emotional energy body, our psychology mindset, and also in our relationship with our spiritual nature, who we are as a spiritual being, okay? All those levels are being affected. And when we understand that that's happening, we can use solutions at all of those levels and come in and give ourselves at every level the soothing and the love and the nurturance and the support we need to come into a state of complete peace and relaxation response so that we don't have to walk around in life feeling anxious. So the first set of foundational things that I would recommend that you be conscious of, I'm not going to tell you what to do because it's not my job, but be really conscious of this one set of uh, levers that you can pull if you have morning anxiety or you have anxiety in general. And that is the level of your consumption of caffeine, sugar, and alcohol. Now, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nutritionist, and I don't need to be to tell you that caffeine, sugar, and alcohol are going to mess you up and mess with your anxiety, <laughs> because I've been there, and I've physically experienced it, so I know, okay? It doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out, if you load yourself up on caffeine, what does it do? It spikes your adrenaline. What do you want when you're anxious or fearful? Your whole body is on fire in your nervous system. You need to be calmed, not spiked with adrenaline, okay? So caffeine, coffee, teas, anything that's caffeinated, but also sugar. Doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that when you load yourself up on sugar, you don't feel good. It messes with your mental emotional balance, sends you into highs and lows mentally and emotionally as your body tries to cope with that unnatural spiking. Okay? Same thing with alcohol. Just notice how you feel after the fact that you've drunk an alcohol, like the next day. Notice the depressant effect it has. Notice how it slows you down and makes you sluggish. Notice that none of that is helpful when you are wanting to come into a state of peace and relaxation and vibrancy within yourself where you can feel safe and good in the world, okay? So make good choices for yourself about how much of all of those kinds of things you load into your body, remembering that your physical body and your mind and your emotions are all completely connected. So what you actually consume into your body is absolutely going to affect your body and is absolutely therefore going to affect your mind and your emotional state because they're all working together as one big symbiotic system. So that said, we take the fuel out of the fire so we're not pouring fuel on top of the fire. Then we want to say, okay, in my physical body, what is happening when I have anxiety as a foundational understanding to put some foundational things in place before I talk to you about some cool little things that you can do for morning anxiety. Well, inside your body, when you are experiencing anxiety, really what you are having is you're having some kind of a fear response or a stress response. Now, in your nervous system, that means you're in some level of fight flight so your brain and body are really smart and what happens is is when there is a perceived danger or threat your body cranks up into a fight flight response and if you're not in a fight flight response you are in the opposite which is a relaxation response so the question we ask ourselves is how can I proactively signal my brain and body out of fight flight response and into relaxation response because we get triggered into anxious fearful and stress responses in our physiology so our brain and body goes danger 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 and starts to react inside we get tense we get uneasy we get uncomfortable feelings in our stomach butterflies our heart rate raises our breath gets out of sync 
And we can be in acute forms of that where we have big spikes of that, adrenaline and discomfort and anxious waves of emotion take us over. Or we can be in a chronic, ongoing, ever-present, low-grade level of anxiety, stress and fear where it's become so normal to us that we don't even realize it's unhealthy and not normal. And what we want to understand is there are certain things that have triggered us into those states and there are certain ways we can prompt our brain and body to recognize we are safe, we are not in danger and it is okay to relax and to come into a peaceful state inside our body where our emotional state will begin to balance. I'm going to give you three suggestions The first one is understanding how to do diaphragmatic breathing. When you breathe with your diaphragm properly, which is breathing gently and fully into your belly, just think belly rise and belly fall on your inhale and exhale, much like a baby when they're breathing. When you breathe that way, it signals your body that you're safe and it helps to bring you into relaxation response. If you were truly in danger and there was really something for you to be stressed about, afraid of or anxious about, you would not be able to be sitting calmly breathing. You would be fighting or fleeing for your life, right? That's how the brain and body understand this message from your breathing. The second tip that I've got for you, aside from diaphragmatic breathing, is please, for the love of all things, if you do not know about emotional freedom techniques, Learn it today. If you do know about emotional freedom techniques, acronym is EFT and the nickname is tapping, if you do know about it and you are not using it, begin using it immediately today. If you are using it but you have not used it for your anxiety, begin using it immediately today. This technique is absolutely life-changing It is an absolute no-brainer for supporting you at every level of your being for almost everything in your life, but it is directly and specifically very powerful for healing with our anxiety, fears, and stress response, okay? Now, the third tip I'll give for you around foundations, we talked about removing the consumption of things that put fuel on the fire, then we're talking about three things that set a good relaxation response prompt breath work, tapping. The third one is just what I'm going to call self-soothing. It is understanding how to caretake yourself. Almost think about a parent soothing and nurturing a child. You want to think about the fact that you are a very physical being with all your senses. You've got five physical senses. There are things that you can do to soothe yourself. And to caretake yourself in your environment, the space that you work, the space that you live, the space that you sleep, the smells around you, the sounds around you, the routine that you have on a daily basis, so that you are not putting yourself in frantic, panicked, harsh, clinical, jarring environments and ways of living that only cause you to feel more anxious. Okay, we want softness, we want soft lights, we want soft routine, we want to be soft and gentle with ourselves, we want soft, beautiful fabrics and textures, soft colors, we want beautiful aromatherapy smells like lavender that are soothing. You want to think about the fact that you're doing everything you can to wrap your beautiful self in nurturing gentleness to signal to yourself at every level that you are safe and that everything is okay. Right, so that provides us with some foundations that support you, generally speaking, okay? Now we're going to talk about your psychology. In your mindset, what is happening that is triggering you to experience either Spikes of anxiety or ongoing chronic low-grade anxiety. And specifically, what is going on that is causing your morning anxiety? So that when you wake in the morning, the feeling washes over you immediately before you've even had a chance to really think about anything. So with regards to mindset, 
there can be things that are happening at the surface and there can be things that are happening much deeper down. So when we talk about surface things, they can be things that are happening in your life and so you're very consciously aware of them and those things are prompting you, you are reacting to those things in an anxious way. Situations, people, uncertainty, money stuff, health stuff, relationship stuff, grief, loss, can be anything going on in your life that at a surface level you are very consciously aware of what is making you and I use those words very loosely because we make ourselves anxious by our interpretations. Situations don't make us feel. Situations just are. Then we have our interpretation and we have our emotional response. So situations are happening and you are having a conscious dialogue with yourself and that whole situation and dialogue with yourself is creating anxiety for you. If that's what's happening... We have to create a trajectory shift in your conscious thinking mind about the way that you are narrating what's going on in your life and the conversation dialogue you're having with yourself about what that means about you, what it means about your safety, what it means about your future. Okay, We must change that conversation. If we don't change the conversation, then what happens is, is you do all this beautiful healing work all this foundational work and breath work and tapping and self-soothing. But if you don't change your narrative, which is your whole paradigm and the way you view what is happening in your life, then you are going to recreate through conditioned habitual thinking, you're going to recreate anxious experiences, be it in this situation or in future situations. So we have to train you and teach you how to be a leader of your mind, how to become the master of your mind, so you can shift the internal dialogue and you can come to a place where actually everything you're saying inside yourself is absolutely supporting relaxation response, peace, calm, empowerment, faith, trust instead of the dialogue pouring fuel on the fire of the anxiety, okay? The other kind of thing that can be going on in the mindset piece is rather than it being at a conscious thinking level and or being about a situation that is obvious, there can often be roots that are much deeper buried. They may be not necessarily unconscious because sometimes they can be just a scratch below the surface, but they're not in your everyday radar. They're a little bit further down. They might be about who you think you are, your relationship with yourself, what you think you're worth, your sense of safety in the world, might be about your sense of safety in relation to other people or the world around you, might be things to do with your childhood. And if those things are deep down and they are unaddressed, then what can happen is those things are actually running us, okay? We're run 95% by our subconscious and unconscious and 5% by our conscious mind. So we have all these sorts of what we call programs, coding, beliefs and narratives inside of ourselves, interpretations of things that have happened and things that maybe haven't happened, what people have said and did and not said and not done, things we've done or not done what we've made up our mind about ourselves, life and other people and that is set in deeply within us and that is the soup that we are swimming in on a daily basis. And if that is unsettling and that is not positive and that is set in a way which would lead you to feel unsafe in the world, then it's no wonder that you walk around feeling anxious in the world. And it's no wonder that when you wake in the morning, a sense of anxiety washes over you from the get-go because it's not necessarily about a situation in your life that you can pinpoint. It's more about your inner coding that is driving it. And that's why it can be really confusing for people when they're like, number one, I don't have a situation in my life that should cause me to feel anxious. So therefore, I don't understand right? And there's nothing to point to as the problem or the cause. Number two, it's hard to sometimes see the wood for the trees, meaning you can't see yourself objectively. You don't understand what your own coding is. So you can't necessarily see easily for yourself what might be going on buried a little bit deeper that is giving rise to a sense of anxiety. I will put a, a side note to that and that, that is this. 
if you have been prompted into a sense of feeling unsafe in the past in a situation where you actually were unsafe, like you had trauma and you were actually in a situation which your fear, stress and anxiety was a warranted response to the environment, but you never had trauma healing and you never had a way to signal your brain and body into safety, then your brain and body, by all intents and purposes, you might physically be safe now, but your brain and body don't know it. And so they are still running on a cycle which says, I'm not safe, I'm not safe, I'm not safe, the world isn't safe, the world isn't safe. I don't know what's going to happen today. People are unreliable. People are unpredictable. And your brain and body are running in a cycle because they were once unsafe and nobody told them. Nobody trained the brain and body. Nobody signaled the brain and body in a particular way to help the brain and body understand, oh, oh, okay, we are not in that time and place anymore. We are in a different time and place and I can come to a different time and place set point that's appropriate for the current situation. Okay, so there can be these kinds of combinations of things going on. Now, you might already know what is going on for you. If you don't and you need more help with that, you can reach out to me. You can email me, support at bernadettelogue.com. This is the kind of thing I help people with all the time. I'm very, very good. My zone of genius is getting to the root of things really, really quickly and being able to help you find the roots of things and create a solution and a practical plan to get you back on track. Okay. So for that, I do one-on-one coaching. You can also come and join my program if you're interested in doing a group program. But for specific morning anxiety, here is what I latched onto and utilized for me and it made a big difference and what I've suggested to other people that's made a big difference for them is understand this. There are two really important times of day for you to be feeding your mind with new, powerful safety messages, nurturing messages, soothing messages, which will help your mind to shift trajectory and will also help to soothe your nervous system, soothe your emotional state and put you on a new path. And those two important times of day are when you go to sleep at night and you lay down on your pillow and you start to drift out of conscious thinking deep into sleep. Okay, And the second important time is when you first stir in the morning, most people are stirring somewhere between, you know, some of us are stirring 3 to 5 a.m., others are stirring between 4 to 6 a.m., whatever it might be, you start to stir, meaning you begin tossing and turning, you start to kind of wake up, you don't have your eyes open, you're not really aware what day of the week it is yet, but you start to come up out of deep sleep. And as soon as you become consciously aware that you're in bed and you've woken up, that moment right there, is the other most important time to feed your mind before it gets momentum for the day. So we've got, as we go to sleep at night, we are feeding our mind before we're about to go to sleep for six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours, and we're going to marinate inside of whatever the quality of consciousness is that we went to sleep with. So if you go to sleep with toxic, negative, unsettled, fearful, anxious thoughts in your mind, You drift down into sleep, and that is the quality of consciousness that you're going to swim in for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours. So we want to feed your mind with very powerful, beautiful messages as you drift off to sleep. You can do it just before you sit down and go to sleep. You can do it as you're going to sleep. And we want powerful messages. So there are two ways to do it. You get an audio of affirmations, you can use my affirmations, you can use make up your own affirmations, or you can do self-talk. Most people find it easier to use audios. Uh, Inside my community, I have loads and loads and loads of them. Uh, You can go and search out people that you love that might have other affirmations, whatever vibes with you. Or, you know, when I do coaching with people one-on-one, I take them through how to make their own audios that are really tailored to their unique needs. So you listen to that before you go to sleep. You are filling your psyche, your emotional state, and you are literally bathing your nervous system and your body in this beautiful messaging. Don't forget that words have energy, music has energy, intention behind words have energy, and that is what you are just bathing yourself in before you drift off to sleep. Now, if you do that every single night, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, what happens is it has a cumulative effect 
and now you're waking every morning having gone to sleep with that quality of consciousness to support you so that when you wake in the morning you've already got a head start on that morning anxiety okay and it has a compounding effect it's not what we do once that counts it's what we do all the time okay so that's the going to sleep part when you wake in the morning this is the really important bit you want to understand what specific messaging you uniquely need, okay? So the kinds of affirmations, the kind of soothing messages, and that will be either to counter any situational challenges in your life, to soothe the anxiety about that, or if we find the roots of your anxiety and we can message to that to counteract it as the medicine to that issue, what your mind, your spirit, your energy, your emotional system needs. Then what we do is when you start to stir in the morning, you begin to practice the self-talk to nourish yourself before your mind takes a hold of you. Now, there are two ways to do this. You can do it with just self-talk, which is what I usually do, and that's how I created the shift. Other people, we use audios if they find it easier. So same thing, you can use the same audio from the night before or you can have a specific morning audio that supports you for what you need in the morning. The minute you stir awake, you grab your smartphone, you plug in your earphones and you press play. Before you've even really sat up, before you've opened your eyes, while you're still a sleepy sleepy, <laughs> okay, and you listen to it, now, if you do that with an audio, for example, for a couple of weeks, like say 30 days, what happens is, is when you wake in the morning, it becomes automatic that you begin to talk to yourself that way. I love myself. I'm safe. I've got this. It's going to be a wonderful day. Everything's going to be okay. Whatever the messages are that you uniquely need, I trust myself. I trust life. I'm supported, I'm loved, I'm good enough. Whatever the messages are that you need, it has a cumulative effect and it compounds. You're listening every single morning when you first stir awake. And what happens is, with a few weeks under your belt, you will wake and you'll be able to start saying those things to yourself without even needing an audio. You start to self-talk yourself with power, with confidence and with leadership. And what you are doing is you are providing loving leadership to your mind, your body, your nervous system. When they have experienced anxiety, they need someone to love and nurture them out of that cycle. And that someone is you. Therapists and coaches and all of these things that you can go out and get support from are fabulous. Now, very important. And, not but, and you must upskill yourself skill yourself to know how to lovingly lead yourself at the level of your spirit your mind your body your nervous system your emotions so that in daily life you know what to do to proactively preempt and prevent like a prescription any of these dreadful morning dreads morning anxieties etc happening and that if you land in it, you know how to get yourself out of it because you've got the prescription, the medicine that your mind, body, spirit, energy, emotional system need. Okay, so that is feeding your mind morning and night with the specific messages that are going to soothe and help you. And when you keep doing that morning and night, morning and night, morning and night, it completely interrupts the morning anxiety, morning dread pattern. Okay, the last thing I'm going to say about this topic is this. We have dealt with physiology, like consumption of things that pour fuel on the fire of a nervous system that's already anxious. We've talked about understanding the nervous system, fight, flight, breathing, tapping, self-soothing with your environment. We've talked about your psychology mindset, coming at it from different angles. The last thing is your spirituality. Now, if you're atheist, stick with me. If you're religious, same thing, it doesn't matter. We are all beings from beyond this time and place, okay? You are, you are a human being and you're in a mind, you're in a body and you've got a mind, okay? And you have a nervous system and you have emotions. Those are all things that are happening to you and they're experiences that you're having. But you are something greater than that. You are a being, okay? You are an energy, you are a spirit, a soul, a higher self, whatever you want to call it, consciousness. And you arrived into this world. And you are walking around in this world trying to figure out how to be human. 
and how to be safe and how to get by. And it doesn't matter how successful you are, what's going on in your life, what your relationships are, what your money situation is, what country you come from, whatever. We're all human beings and we're all going, what the bleep, what is life about? <laughs> okay. And underneath, if you don't have a frame of reference where you have made peace with and made sense of life, it will often lead to a chronic low-grade level of anxiety, which if it had a voice and it could talk to you, because all feelings are messengers and they all bring us messages, if anxiety of that kind could talk to you, it would say, who am I? What am I doing here? What are we meant to be doing? How do we make sure we're safe? Is everything going to be okay? What's going to happen in the future? How do I get by? How do I be good and successful? What the bleep? <laughs> Okay, and it doesn't matter whether you're religious or atheist or spiritual or Buddhist or Eastern or Western or whatever your, your gig is, but it's about you having your own journey to your own understanding of who you are and what life is about to make sense of it for yourself so you can make peace with life, so you can have peace in life. If you don't have peace with life, meaning you're fighting with life, you're anxious about life, you're resistant to things going on in life that you can't control, you haven't got a sense of security or a sense of belonging to what this whole universe thing is, then it feels very unsettling. It feels like being on some random journey with no map and no compass and no idea what you're doing and you've woken up in the middle of a nightmare. And then you plaster a smile on and go about your daily life and you try to be like normal like everybody else and underneath something feels off. Okay? So that's a big existential end to the podcast episode. But basically the crux of that is for me is like once I kind of got that piece of the puzzle an understanding about life, universe and the spiritual journey really helped alongside the psychological bit about having peace inside the mind, inside the body, the nervous system, being able to move around in this world in a calm and confident way. So if you need help with that, then the best offering that I can give you is my Soul Odyssey program. Soul Odyssey is an A to Z of understanding who you are, what you're doing here, what your purpose is, and your place in this magical, incredible universe, and bringing you to a place of purpose, fulfillment, magic, and inner peace with a deep relationship with your soul and with Source, God, Creator, Universe, by all names we honour it. To find out about that program, you can go to BernadetteLobe.com, www.BernadetteLobe.com, and click on Program on the top menu to find out about the Soul Odyssey program. It's epic, it's amazing, it comes with 12 months live support, where we meet every month in a group environment for live calls, Plus, we have a fabulous online discussion forum where you can get access to me for Q&A throughout our time together and you self-navigate through this beautiful program with me alongside you, okay? People are joining regularly, so you can come on in any time. There's no specific time. Come and join us now. There's also a bonus if you're joining at the moment, which you'll find out about on the information page when you go through and check it out. And if you are interested in the deep diving into root causes for you around anxiety and having me personally work with you, you can go to www.bernadettelobe.com and click on coaching on the top menu, or you can email me support at bernadettelobe.com. Just put coaching in the subject line and I'll send you back all the information so you can see if that is a good fit for you. It has been a pleasure to be here with you, to help you with understanding anxiety, specifically morning anxiety, and being able to look at it from a holistic point of view. If you need anything else, you know where to find me, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Thanks for listening to Practical Spirituality with B. I'll talk to you next episode for more spiritual advice for your everyday life, helping you align with your soul so you can live with purpose, fulfillment and magic.